Hello, this is Chuck. We are back again with Life is Strange, <laughs> episode three. So yeah, that little bit at the beginning is, I for always forget that they have a little preview. Even though I don't need to show it, it's just a nice thing. I think it's a nice thing. So obviously the little bit of the beginning was cut off there. But yeah, we, either way, we are starting episode three now, Chaos Theory. So I'm gonna get this started. In the previous episodes of Life is Strange. Whoa! They called film Little Pieces of Time. Because Max wants everybody to see I'm so sick is. of people trying to control me! Don't ever touch me again, freak! It totally makes sense. You hella saved my life. I think it's awesome you set a tongue record on video. <laughs> You're going to be sorry someday. And there she is. How are you doing, Max? Hi, Joyce. I am so sorry about William. I have great memories of him. That was his gift to us. Wonderful memories. Let's talk about your superpower. Hey, it's Thelma and Louise. You're my business now. That's and I... Rachel's bracelet. Why the fuck are you wearing her bracelet? You want me to cut you, bitch? Please, step back. You're kidding. Put that down. Please, get me out of here! Max! Nobody cares about me. Nobody. <laughs> What are you doing here, Max? Now, I know today was difficult for everybody. Miss Coffee, why exactly were you on the route with Kate Marsh? Please, tell us everything. What the hell is this? Max, there was no eclipse scheduled today. I believe you, Warren. I'll believe anything this week. Okay, a story based on a story based game that features player choice, consequences of all your games. Da 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 da. Life is Strange, Episode 3, Chaos Theory. something to show you meet me in the front campus I knew Chloe would be all over this so I better get moving what first I saved Chloe then Kate and now you Lisa <laughs> not a bad record for a week there's been so much going on, I almost forgot about the eclipse. All this atmospheric action can't be a coincidence. And all roads are leading to my tornado vision. Oh, hello. Hey, Bunny. Kate will be back soon, and until then, I'll be catering to your every whim. Are you hungry, Bunny? Here, nosh on this.
Yeah, I fed the rabbit because I have no idea. Oh, should I turn it on? If I'm, I'm assuming, because I'm assuming there's a curfew and this is definitely breaking a curfew. Glad See? the media doesn't waste a second exploiting Kate. Black will still Now she has another video of herself all over the web. And even I'm in this one. Oh, at least the news didn't mention my name. Yet. Blackwell student attempts suicide on campus. Uh, let's read this. Okay, a student at the prestigious Blackwell Academy almost jumped from the roof of a campus dormitory today with most of the students and faculty as startled witnesses. Authorities confirm that the student, Kate Marsh, 18, has been troubled but information is scarce at this time. Dozens of cell phones recorded the event, which ended with an unidentified student talking Marsh down to safety. Click here for video footage and further details. Hmm. Hmm. Besides Rachel, it's been a while since anybody vanished from Arcadia Bay. I shouldn't sound so disappointed. I was just curious. If you have any information regarding the whereabouts of following mis missing persons, please immediately contact Arcadia Bay Dupuis. So she was in 2013. Elton Kessie was 2001. And so fairly spit Sunshine Ray, real name unknown. Missing since 1973. Winston Smith, Melissa Lee Grayson, Elton Kessie. I sure hope these people treat her better when she comes back to school. If she does. Okay. Kate Beverly Marsh. This is, I guess this is her blog. Uh, get well soon. You're, you are in our love. Thinking of you. That's Evan. Uh, Alyssa, we're all behind you, Kate. Father Lamont. Palms 3418, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Victoria Meredith Chase, sending love to you, Kate. Mark, don't know. Wait, Victoria Chase, sending love to you, Kate. Interesting, considering she was one of the main, I don't know this Taylor as well, but. Blackwell Bigfoot's promise to win the next game for you. It's interesting. Either I delete my page or I block everybody. Nowhere to hide these days. Okay, time is bunk. Douglas Adams. Evan Harris, you actually made me proud to be at Blackwell. Bravo, Max. Bravo. Daniel DaCosta. I'm sorry, I'm curious enough to actually look this up. I am going on my phone, checking Google. I'm going to Google Translate because I do not speak. I don't know Spanish. <laughs> Translate Spanish to English. Okay, so what does it say? Well, I'm making the assumption that's Spanish, but for all I know, it might not be. I'm assuming Chica is a girl, but what? You're a tough girl. That's what the translation I got. Uh, Warren Max Power, Hayden, Hayden Jones, Hayden, Hayden, Hayden. Oh, I don't remember who Hayden is. Uh, Brooke Scott, watching you walk down from that roof with Kate was the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Thank you. Uh, Juliet Watson, way to make the headlines, Max. Dana, your hero, Max. Thank you. That's it. With this, I am Everybody actually... will be talking about Kate now. Blackwell might as well shut down for the next month. Yeah, like that's gonna happen. Um, okay, well, there's a text message from Chloe. Get that ass in gear now. Keep your smart mouth shut about everything or I'm coming for your ass. I know where you sleep. Hey whore, feminazis will be exterminated. Watch out. I thought there was one more. Okay, so wait, who? Okay, so this one says specifically Nathan Father. Ah, uh, there, Warren. So, Yo-Yo. Making sure I got the timing right here. 
Okay, yeah. So yo yo Max, just had to remind you again how fucking awesome you were today with Kate on the roof. I'll make you a superhero suit and the lab's 3D printer, cool? And you totally earned dinner on me. Come along with our escape to a Planet O's Apes. Call me. Thanks, Warren. I need to rest my cape tonight. Nathan got suspended too, so it was a good day. I'll call you later. And there's one from her mom. Hope I didn't forget to water the plant, but don't drown either. Max, please call us as soon as you can. We're so proud of you for saving this girl, and we want to know how you are. So please, please get in touch. We love you. Sorry, Mom, I'll call you back in a few minutes. I swear. Thanks for letting me gush over our Blackwell hero. I miss your voice. We're very proud, so milk this moment. Let us know if you want to come up for a quick getaway, okay? We love you, Maxine. And with that, I do believe I am going to take this time to read these... Uh, what? <laughs> so much has happened. <laughs> 38, that's almost nine pages. Well, this set's just going to be a recap set, guys. Sorry about this, but I gotta do it. I gotta do it before the action set ends because I, I feel like the minute I leave, things could get a bit crazy. So, just when I thought shit couldn't get crazier, Chloe took me to her secret lair, the city dump, perfect for Halloween, like where the vehicle and appliance ghosts of Arcadia Bay come to rot and rust, urban dystopia, urban dystopia porn. But instead of taking cool photos, Chloe had me do some silly kind of fun gun tricks until the guy Chloe owes money showed up. Some skeevy guy called Frank. He demanded Chloe pay him back or else. I was shocked that he wasn't the loan shark I had expected, but I could literally feel his bad vibe. I still can't see how my best friend ended up involved with a loser like Frank. Things got truly crazy when Frank took Chloe's gun, or should I say David's gun? And now we have to worry about one more lunatic after Chloe, and maybe me. Chloe really flipped out when she saw that Frank was wearing one of Rachel's Amber's bracelets. That means we definitely have another suspect. This is so not how I intended to spend my time back in Arcadia Bay. After all that drama, ma, volume, oh, 33, I'm assuming is that what it's supposed to be? Chloe and I ended up taking a walk along the tracks deep in the woods. We both needed a hear nothing but the sounds of nature and wildlife. I was shaking inside from our encounter with Frank, and though Chloe's front's tough, I could tell she was shaken too. She told me everything about Frank, which explains why she was trying to blackmail Nathan. It shocks me that a girl I grew up with watching Spongebob ended up in such a scary orbit. Still, I felt safer with her at my side, and I was glad we had a moment of peace. So it was, probably wasn't the best idea to lay down on the tracks and wax about life, etc. as Chloe's leg got stuck in the rail just as the goddamn train showed up. Of course, I was off trying to take a photo for my portfolio, and then I had another, vis another quick flash of my tornado vision. I could see it, almost feel it, tearing the sky apart. My head felt like it was exploding, like in that 80s film, Scanners. Just as fast as the vision came in, it disappeared. I may be in denial about what this apocalyptic apocalyptic image means or doesn't. Then I heard Chloe screaming for help and I was shitting kittens. Her foot, sorry, that, that made me laugh. Otherwise, uh, her foot was stuck in the dam rail and naturally the train was coming around the mountain. I was pretty proud of myself for coming with a drastic if not destructive solution to save Chloe once again. But just in case this journal ever falls into the wrong hands, it's going to remain a BFF secret, so there. A morning adventure over, Chloe dropped me off back at my campus. She was so sweet and said that this had been the best week of her life, despite everything. That made me feel so awesome. Chloe really sees us like we're taking over the world, but what if I hadn't been able to use my rewind power to get her off of the tracks? Chloe might have to lower her expectations, and so will, so will I. Speaking of expectations, David Madsen stopped to talk to me without being a total prick. I thought he was going to bust me for taking the heat for Chloe's weed, but we just talked a little. And for the first time, I felt kind of sorry for David. He is a veteran. I know he probably saw awful things in combat. 
He said he doesn't want to fight with Chloe or me, but all the shit he's pulled and treating Kate like she's a suspect just makes it hard to get along. But I promise to try. For world peace. Something odd happened. As if everything happening isn't bizarro. But I saw Kate having an intense conversation with Mr. Jefferson, and she ended up practically running away from him in tears. I wish I could have casually asked, oh by the way, what's up with Kate? Like he would tell me anyway. I know Kate treats Jefferson like he's an apostle or something, so what did he say to make her so upset? Just when I was feeling good about Chloe and me, I walk into Jefferson's class and see Nathan and Victoria actually, actually sitting on my desk, on my desk. Unreal. Assholes. Bookend. Kate Marsh almost killed herself. My hands are sh still shaking, but I have to write this down while I can. Right at the start of Jefferson's class, Kate went to the roof of the girls' dorm to jump. Every student and teacher was watching her, like it was a Blackwell rooftop concert. I saw her actually jump, but I was just about to I was just about able to use my rewind to get her back on the roof. I tried harder than I ever did and somehow I stopped time completely. I made it to the roof, but again my head felt like it was going to blow up. I knew that I couldn't just keep rewinding to save Kate. I had to try and talk her down on my own. She was already in so much pain over the video and all the bullying, so she wasn't going to buy everything I tried to tell her. You see movies with people trying to talk someone out of suicide, but it's very different when I'm the one doing the talking. I covered everything I could, and Kate almost jumped anyway. Cliché or not, I told her how much her friends and family love her, even if they don't all show it now. Lo and behold, Kate stepped back from the ledge, alive, and almost cried in her arms. I know this isn't about me, though I have to admit it was an amazing feeling. It was a it was an amazing feeling to walk arm in arm with Kate from the roof to outside the dorm. Like I said, the whole school and police were watching us almost completely silent. Then I heard what sounded like Yo Logan yelling out, give it up for Max, and everybody started to clap and cheer. Talk about surreal. The people who ignored me and treated me like crap suddenly crushing on me. That might be the strangest thing that's happened to me this insane week. And that made me wonder if Victoria was watching and how she felt about all this. I almost wanted to find her, just to get in her smug face for enabling Kate's suicide attempt. Such cruel bullshit. Though to be fair, Victoria wasn't the only one that was responsible. Nathan Prescott seemed to have disappeared, which was probably a good thing. And after all that, I still had to talk to the and after all that, I still had to talk to the police and give a statement. It felt so weird to do since I have since I've seen it in pretty much every pr police procedural show. I had to lie my ass off when he questioned me about the other students because I just don't think the police are ever going to find out what happened. Yes, this looks like a job for Supermax, right? Well, of course, I do love it when Chloe calls me that. Even if I don't feel that everyday heroic, that everyday heroic for helping Kate down, maybe it's wrong for me to think I have to feel anything but grateful that Kate didn't jump. What was really odd was when all the students and faculty surrounded me and Kate, and then start patting our backs and shoulders like we were heroes. I wasn't sure how to respond, considering Kate almost threw herself off the roof because of everybody at school. Like I said, I can't blame everybody, and I still don't really know where to point all my fingers. The very best thing that was even, the very best thing was that even though Kate was still in tears and confused, I definitely saw her smile once she realized how happy everybody was that she was alive. I smiled too. The police and paramedics swooped in, and then Kate was covered in a blanket and gently escorted to the ambulance. They didn't thank me or look me up at me like a, like like I was a hero. I guess they're used to saving people without applause. But if I'm super honest, I felt pretty cool. Like I got a hug from the whole school. So maybe Blackwell Academy isn't totally bad. It's not enough that Kate is alive. And though I'm not enough of an egomaniac to take the credit, credit, I still had to get the principal I still had to get Blackwell to get the Blackwell third degree from Principal Wells. It wasn't bizarre to be in his tacky office with Nathan Prescott, David Madsen, and Mr. Jefferson calmly talking about why Kate would attempt suicide. 
I was quiet but giddy inside, just replaying in my head the moment when Kate stepped toward me with a glimmer of hope in her eyes. Part of me wanted to smash Nathan's smug face against the desk, knowing he had a lot to do with Kate's suicide attempt. I thought about doing it, then flipping a quick rewind, but I knew that would be the start of bad, dangerous habit. Of a bad, dangerous habit. Fortunately, Principal Wells amazingly did the right thing and booted Nathan for a few days after I told him what happened in the bathroom. He must have more shit on Nathan because otherwise I doubt this would happen to a Prescott. That's some small justice for Kate. There'll be more if it's the last thing I do, which could be if I'm not careful. If I'm being grilled in the principal's den, I hung out with Warren on the lawn so I could feel grass under my feet and watch the fluffy clouds. He's such a sweetheart. He kept telling me how proud he was that I stopped Kate from jumping. I don't believe that I did, but I have to say it's better to be treated like a hero at school than like a twee loser. Still, I told Warren that something ominous is happening at Blackwell Academy. Rachel Amber, Chloe, and now Kate have all been victims. Not to mention me. If I keep playing amateur detective. I wish I could have let Warren know about my power, but it's not the right time. As if anything is the right time anymore. And to make the day end on the most surreal note possible, the sky went dark, and we watched a solar eclipse that was not announced on the news or any astronomy site. What is happening in Arcadia Bay? And with that, I am going to have to end the set here. So, thank you for liking if you like. Thank you for commenting if you commented. Thank you for subscribing if you subscribed. Thank you for favoriting if you favorited. And thank you for simply clicking on this video. And until next time, guys, see ya!